think that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out does life continue after we die and can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? I teach spiritual intuition and I'm a channel and intuitive but my focus is on teaching how people can have direct connection on their own to help get them through their lives. That's basically it. There's no, this idea there's no middleman. There's no church but there's also no workshop leader or uh, thing you have to join. <laughs> you can just do it on, do it on your own and get these ways to help help your life be less suffering that is just so important that is so important and again you know you're doing that from oregon um, yeah. and you've been there a number of years but i guess a lot of your work as well as you've fully sort of said off off air as well it's all remote nowadays isn't it yeah yeah absolutely and that's the way you know if you can get somebody from japan or or from australia or Wisconsin or wherever, it's just better because then you're getting these little sparks all over that can start to build up and ignite in a good way. Uh, <laughs> there was, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, uh, it is. And um, I know how busy that, you know, you have been. And I mean, I'm you're obviously, you know, your work has sort of adjusted with the times that we live in as well and probably is going to go more down that road. Just remind us as well, what is your website? Uh, it's uh, sarahwiseman.com. So S A R A W I S E M A N.com. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I thank you for coming on. I'm so glad I reached out. I'm so glad that we connected in the end and, and, and yeah. we're, we're doing this right now because this, this is important, especially the times that we live in right now, which we'll, which we'll get into in just a little bit as well. And um, gosh. Okay. So you had a near death experience in uh, i want to say well around 2000 right mm -hmm. but i mean you mm -hmm. before that experience who was sarah what was she doing oh oh we don't want to even talk about uh, <laughs> that person that person was incredibly afraid incredibly in the mainstream dominant culture just just the good girl wanting to do the good quote things and 
um, it was a disaster, really. It was a disaster. And um, my childhood, I was kind of raised by, um, kind of like if you watch these, if you watch these movies from the 60s where they're on vacation in Italy and it's cocktail hour all the time, that was sort of my childhood of, it was always cocktail hour. Uh, and so there wasn't any, there wasn't really uh, any spirituality, any religion. It was just blank. And so my life sort of continued on in this blank way, even though I was always doing really strange things. As a child, I would always have seances in my bedroom and I would read religious books. And, and yet then I'd go out, out of my bedroom and then it would be this, this party going on all the time. Um, so in 2000, I had a very easy near-death experience in terms of, you know, it wasn't in a hospital. It was just, I was in a plane, the oxygen went out, we made an emergency landing. But in that moment, you know, it all changes. You taste that m mortality and then you sort of like, you know, it just all, it just chink, 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 it all shifts. You just are like, well, this life I thought is not how it's going to go. Things are going to be different. And that's when I, I guess I had, I would call it spontaneous psychic opening, but I realize now I had psychic ability since I was little. I just didn't have the vocabulary. Uh, ab so, absolutely wow and you were going you were traveling from where to where when that happened <laughs> just it was just uh, just a very small trip from i think it was from portland oregon to palm springs california like that's an hour you know two hours um just a little trip and in that span of time the whole you know the fork in the road the whole direction changed so and that's like, you know, that's a long time ago now. So it's interesting because at the time that was the biggest thing I'd ever experienced. And now, you know, as you proceed in life, then maybe not more near death experiences happen, but then you start to have these chunks of awakening. Oh, here's one. Here's one. <laughs> Am I going to get another one soon? You know, it becomes the way on the path is is sort of interesting. Well, I'm just really curious about your near death experience. And, you know, you talked about a loss of oxygen there, but um, I'm guessing, um, you know, there was an incident that happened, you know, which caused, you know, maybe the oxygen mask to uh, drop. Yeah, well, I, I don't think I don't think the plane lost oxygen, you know, when they say uh, the yellow masks appear, right? When you when the yellow masks appear, it's not a good day. So we had to have those on and, and everyone's staring. But, but for me, um, this was the moment that I, I knew God, I saw God, I saw the universe. I don't know how to explain it, but in that moment, energy filled everything and it was all different from then. It's, it's really difficult to explain, isn't it? Because it's such a profound yeah. moment that you probably had there that, you know, you touched something, some part of yourself that, you, that, that, that reawakened that, you know, it's this, this, this foreverness, isn't it? It's this, uh, the I am, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's undescribable, but you know, you went through something life changing because look at what path it took you on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's a beautiful way to put it. The I am or the everything is, it just was there. And I'd never seen, you know, of course I'd heard about it, but I'd never, I'd never known it. And so it was like, okay. And so then, um, you know, some people have <laughs> these near death experiences and then they're like, oh, bliss, everything's lovely. And I just went immediately into complete dark night of the soul. You know, I, 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 I think I lost all my work. Well, I can't remember. No, that was later, but I got divorced. Just a whole life disintegrated, disintegrated, everything gone. So we just have to start over. That must have been so difficult, that part of your life. When you look back now, I mean, obviously you're, you're healed from all that now. But I mean, yeah. at, at the time, I mean, it's just so difficult. It's just so painful, isn't it? Well, yeah, there's... um. There's probably a lot, there was probably a lot of guidance 
from other people that had been through that. But for some reason, the universe was blocking me from any book or any person. It was just like I was blocked. So I just was in my own stew of misery, you know, trying to see how to get out at that point. And you did. That's the. I mean, that this is what it's all about. You did, and now, and you know, you show the way for others now, which we'll get into. So, yeah. obviously, you're trying to get published. Let's let's go to that point of your life. You're trying to get published. You know, there's a book or there's books to write. You you know, you're feeling drawn. How how long before doing trying to write the book or books did you sort of you know start dabbling in you know. Um, doing readings or, or, or knowing that you've got the gift, you know, tuning into your guides. Yeah. yeah. It was a while. Um, I, I don't know if I'm a slow, you know, like a slow adapter, but um, it was so 2000 near death experience. And then I don't think the first book came out till 2008. And I don't think I started channeling until 2004. So like these big gaps, I mean, I think they're big. Um, so, so I wanted to be, um, a chick lit, I don't know if you know what that is anymore, but a chick lit novelist, that was my dream goal. So you can see, see, I was in this dominant culture. This is my highest goal that I could be a chick lit novelist and write romances. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was my goal. And I was writing, 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 and, and then the channeling came and I was like, no, thank you. This is interesting. No, <laughs> just a hard no. I want the novelist thing. And the channeling kept coming. And um, I finally was on the beach um, one day just sobbing. It was on the Washington, Washington coast, coast, just sobbing. And I said, if you want me to do this channeling, this like angel writing, I really don't want to do this, but if this is my path, I accept it. And the next day I went back home and there was an email from an agent saying, I can't do anything with this novel you've sent me, but how are you interested in writing a book on channeling? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you can't make okay, it. Okay, you win. And, and that, that's right. And that was on uh, sort of after what, 43 rejections, 40 rejections. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, and you ne it never got you down, I don't think. You just knew that there was something there, didn't you? You knew that you was going to do something that was... I knew something was going to happen, but it, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know it would take that turn or... Uh, but yeah, yeah, I knew something. And that's why I just knew, like, keep getting rejected, keep getting rejected, something absolutely <laughs> you know and that i mean that's got to be a lesson for us all just to, you know to keep persevering as well you know when you know that you know there's something calling you and you, you're kind of following that path and even may you may not have known at the time it was your purpose that was calling you but yeah. a to b to c well, right yeah and i'm nothing special everybody out there listening like has this destiny it might not be you know writing a book it could be you're a great healer or you're a good listener or all the things you could be but it's it's everyone has this call and the answer if they choose to answer and the destiny comes it just does well you may not call yourself special but you have helped a lot of people let's not forget that you know your work has helped so many i know that to be true and so do mm. you I'm sure that's not the only reason you do. I mean, yes, you, you want to be of service, but it's service meets purpose. And I think that's what your publicist at the time really pushed you towards. And, and like you say, such a field that you just never thought that was, you know, would have been, been the case. But that that first book or almost first book, I suppose, it just flowed, didn't it? I mean, it just it just came through you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, the first book, um, I had the channeling done. It was the 33 lessons, which are the first piece of the channeling. And then um, the rest of the book was supposed to be how to channel, which, 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 okay, I didn't know because I didn't have a process. It just happened. And, um, and then I had to figure out how to channel. And that was what helped me in like how to begin teaching okay, how do you break it down? Like, how do I even do this? I guess I 
close my eyes, but how do I type on the computer when I, you know, it's just like all these things, like how do I, how does it happen? And then, and then beginning to have um, this idea of, well, how do you do clairvoyance then? And how do you do these other things? And just starting to experiment and break things down as they worked for me. Yeah, now that's uh, that's unique. I mean, you know, you had uh, this was all sort of it was almost like it was coming back from a past life. I mean, I'm I'm saying yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. uh, it almost feels like that w- with the way that you describe it, because and this does happen to many others. But w- w- I've seen this more and more right now. The, the psychic and the channeling side coming sort of together. Um, being yeah. part part as uh, uh, as one, and I think I think it is one. I think we can do both. Um, mm-hmm. If if you were to sort of describe, you know, what is challenging to you uh, after all these years since that writing that first mm-hmm. book, what, what would you say it is? Do you think? Well, I don't think it's for me. I don't channel. I'm not like a Seth, or I don't channel through my voice. Um, I channel in writing. Um, it is a hearing of. Um, um it is a hearing of at the beginning they were very defined beings a multiple of different different styles of beings who would come and stand in the room and then now it's more just like i know almost like the dimensionality that i'm trying to go to and then they're there and then it just starts coming in like a feed kind of and then i'm just like trying to just keep going yeah it's like a feed yeah 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 that's absolutely yeah. and it's almost like what you're describing there is that that those separate voices that were coming in so strong sort of you know over time pretty quick as well became one that mm-hmm. and it's just it's and is it well i guess it's constantly with you i guess you've had to work on you know being able to switch it off not take it outside you know what i mean and so, certain situations know, it, I don't think that's true, actually, for me. Um, the clairvoyance, the mind's eye viewing is always there, but the channeling comes when it's supposed to come. And again, there's these big gaps. And I have sat waiting, like, okay, I'd love to channel. And then, oh, there's nothing there. And then two years later, oh, it's coming. I, in fact, I'm right now. Um, I'm in a period where I've started again, which is very exciting because it's been a number of years and um, we'll see what happens. It's very exciting. It's this excitement of like wanting to do nothing else but receive. But of course, you can't do that all day long. You have to pace yourself. And, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 I mean, because if you did that, then they would, it would just be, it'd be too much. It'd be too much. You'd be, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and you, you know how to pace yourself because you've been doing this long, long enough. I mean, how many books have you written? I mean, I go to Amazon, which again, all the links for every book and your website are in the description of this YouTube video below. And if this is on a podcast, wow. just go to your website, your website one more time. Uh, Sarah Us. is sarahweisman.com sarahweisman.com thank you how many books have you uh, have you have I you published i think it's 16 books um and then ebooks but the ebooks are like e pamphlets <laughs> they're very little but they're not enough for a book but i wanted to put them out there and then the courses are really where um i put a lot of time and energy because a lot of people do really well if there's audio to follow and so I wanted to have it not just be written, but to take them into these meditative spaces where they could learn how to do this themselves. You have done some fantastic books and, uh, you know, it's hard to do it justice in the short time that we've got, obviously, because there's there's some there's some really good books. And uh, I, I was just going through a few of them as well. And I'm like, you know, this is, you know, it, it's the ABCs, but it's also the more advanced stuff as well. So it, yeah. you, you sort of meet people where they're at. And your work has gone a lot more into teaching as well right now. Yeah. Um, I think teaching began, well, teaching began in about 2012, which is an interesting year, of course. And I think I only had, you know, like six people. And I just thought, well, we'll see how this goes. And then it's built. And that's, for me, you know, I'm not, I'm not very good at sticking to a plan. And so um, that's how everything's happened. I'm in the shower. I'm like, I should 
teach or actually no no actually and other people are always giving me like now i'm remembering um dr stephen farmer said you should teach and then someone else said you should teach and i'm and i keep getting these people saying you should and i'm like i have nothing to teach and then well six people are kind of interested so i'll start with that um yeah yeah what one of the things i'm the most um i don't mean to jump ahead but i'm the most excited about is i have this i have so when the COVID, when COVID came i was very concerned about people losing you know their livelihoods and i thought i need to help people uh, be able to know how to do psychic readings uh, so that they can work from home and keep that income coming in and um, so i started the psychic reader training part and that is what now instead of it's just like me trying to teach like other people can go out and and i'm just overwhelmed by who's shown up and like how many gifted wonderful lovely people there are in the world that are like spreading this idea of direct connection no middleman everybody can do it so yeah that's uh, incredible um god there's so many questions just to, even from that and we, we've just sort of left the channeling for a minute but this is this is really interesting okay so how long does that course take then to do and uh, how well, i think it takes it yeah. takes um a year and a half and i kind of think sometimes when people come in um they don't even need <laughs> they, but but i want to make sure that people have done like the the ethical work or they've done their inner stuff before they're helping other people because you want to clear all that stuff before you're trying to help others um or at least if you can't clear because people have lots of really gifted people have been through tons and tons of trauma and so you want to if not clear the trauma at least relax it or bring awareness so that people know what they're bringing to the table when they're helping other people. Yeah. Can I, um, add, so I'm very fascinated. So I had a lot of trauma in my life and um, I know other people listening did too. And what is interesting is that I find that so many people that come to this work who are psychic had this kind of past, you know, a physical sexual emotional abuse or poverty or something else and and so this act of disassociating when this trauma is happening is also exactly the same skill we use when we're going into the other realms and so it's sort of like as children we learn oh i'll just go elsewhere and then that can be used for positive later like oh i know how to go elsewhere and instead of trying to escape this terrible thing, I can just be like bringing beauty and hope and love to the world. It, it wasn't, wasn't good, but it, it can be turned because this ability is there. But that's so healing for so many people when they... Yeah. You know, when they turn it around like that as well. And, uh, I, you know, I guess for some people it takes uh, that, that to have gone through something, you know, to um, maybe even want to help others. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. make a difference in the world. I mean, why we have to go to that level to do that. But it, it mm -hmm. you know, we do. I mean, it's it's no different to what's going on right now in the Ukraine. Do you know what I mean? Where people yeah. are seeing the pain that others are going through and they want to make a difference in any way they can do. You know, Absolutely. even if it's just to send peace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and it's been interesting because, um, I mean, it, you know, kind of depends on what day people are listening, what's happened since now. But today, it feels like a lot of the countries, a lot of the sanctions are like the whole world is saying, no, this isn't right. And I don't think that that would have happened decades ago. No, absolutely. And I'm, I'm sure everything happens for a reason. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, it surely does bring out the, the best in people in, in times like this, which is, um, God, I mean, why, why do we have to go through these events? But we do, don't we? We just do. And, we'll, you know, 
how do we face them? What, what, what can we do to help? I, you know, yeah. And you, you've got to feel empathy as well, haven't you? Uh, for people. Oh suffering. yeah. Well, my feeling is, um, there's something, um, not right with Putin's brain at the moment. And yeah. And, um, this is short term, even though it doesn't seem there's some taking out of, uh, it's funny you say that. Um, I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt you so much. Um, no. o- others have have said this to me as well that they've picked on, picked up on some sort of uh, uh, early signs of some sort of stages of 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 dementia or something is not right mentally. In yeah, 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 yeah. or yeah. um, yeah, brain tumor or cocaine or something like that. Something's the workings are not smooth there um which is different than say um now that we're jumping into the i I'm, i can't wait for the mail i'm going to get from this <laughs> but um you know uh different working than say trump brain which had uh a, a different a different style of process um both super egoic but um there's something almost medically for Putin, I think, right now. Yes, and, and I think it's so important you share in that because that, that's almost looking at the karmic side of why this is happening as well. In some respect, it is. You know, the, the, mm. the, the, another mm. take on trying to make sense of what doesn't make sense, do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. Or, uh, or why things are, yeah. Be, um, it's funny because even some of the younger, the younger soldiers that were captured, they, 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 uh, you know, you've seen them on these TikTok videos and, and they really did not know um, if they're telling the truth that they were going to be, this was what it was going to be. They, yeah, You know, they exactly. had no idea. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. So that that's yeah. so interesting that you pick up on that. Um, thank you just for sharing that as well. Um yeah, so let's. I just I just want to cover your your work that you uh, some of the the services that you offer on your website as well, because just just so people have got a rough idea if they're listening to the podcast as well. So so you do the teach. So there's there's teaching uh, courses. Well, they're mainly teaching courses. But if you could just go through just a few. Oh sure, yeah. sure. Um, so basically, um, my website's kind of like all open. You don't have to go through a big sales funnel to get anywhere. Um, so there's there's low cost courses that people can do on their own. It was really important to me to have it accessible. Um, there's uh, the courses directly with me that are more, but I also, I'm trying to keep those accessible. And then there's tons and tons of free like um, podcasts. I did a podcast for like 10 years. So I would guess like there's at least, 600 podcasts that are teaching it's just free and then recently this year i started youtube um and so just trying that but so it's kind of like free low cost and then attempting to keep the other low cost because i am really interested in working with people who are in it for the right reasons and gifted and authentic as opposed to wealthy people. I mean, nothing against, it's fine to be wealthy or it's fine to be not wealthy, but I just am interested in, especially like with people, um, you know, in different um, currency exchange rates and stuff like trying to keep it in different income stratification. So trying to make sure there's always free stuff too. Yeah. And, um, Gosh, so you must have, um, well, you must have students from all over the world, then I'm guessing you must do. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, okay. Because <laughs> I, I I, think I, I, I knew of you some time ago, right? And I, I'm, I think at this time you were doing a lot of the in-person stuff. Do you know what I mean? In-person, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, I'll use the word conferences, but it was your own, own events yeah. as well. Do you know what I mean? And you were, you were flooded with that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it doesn't, su- yeah. yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty introverted. I'm not a great traveler. So I like, uh, I like doing things with the technology because it's better for me personally. So I'm super introverted. I just, I, so, it's so I'm funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, you've got this massive audience, uh, you know, and you've helped so you know, trained so many up. Yet, yet you, yeah, and uh, I, I guess that's just the way you are. Yeah, but but I know that your husband, he's um. He's in the he's in the sort of self help field, isn't he? I think, or yeah, yeah. He was a um, long time chiropractor and uh, uh, master energy healer, and uh, uh, worked with a lot of interesting people. And now he <laughs> he just walks the dog mostly, and we just sort of <laughs> hang out. And I mean, it, it, he's sweat, ready for his next step. But uh, yeah, we're pretty we're pretty mellow. We're pretty mellow. But he's worked with some big. I mean, he's worked with uh, Michael Jackson and um, mm -hmm. uh, Yogi Bhajan. Yeah. yeah, and there was the the famous California band as well, the the, the Grateful the, Dead. Great, Grateful Dead. Yeah. The Eagles. Yeah, the, the Eagle, Paul Young. Yeah, and, and a what, lot of lot of different. So so and he he was their sort of. Uh, what was he doing with them as well? What was his main? He was there um, on tour with the Jacksons. He was there on tour chiropractor. He was a Amer American Sikh at the time. Um, and so he was uh, kind of like chiropractor to the stars in Beverly Hills for a long time. And yeah. So yeah. He, yeah. So, so he obviously he had to be, well, he, he would have been, he would, yeah. I mean, being around that energy and, and the sort of mass followers that they would have had. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it helped you. I'm sure it does help you. Do you know what I mean? Just to, you know, center and, 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 and yeah. with any fear like that, you've got sort of. I'm sure he well, it was so funny when when I met him and he was I really liked him we met in a writing group and I met him and I really liked him and thought he was very interesting and very kind and and then um he started talking about Michael Jackson and I just thought this is so sad because this man is just crazy like obviously he wasn't working with Michael Jackson and then he he came to my house and and he brought an album cover and it was like there he he and michael jackson together i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so funny anyway. yeah yeah and uh, uh you've uh you've got you've got kids stepkids and uh, well i say kids growing up now uh -huh. um and do you think any of them are gonna walk mom's path at all in the future or do you think i think um i think possibly one so one uh one is lives an international traveler, uh, lives abroad. One, um, this is my bi biological kids. One is an artist, and then one is definitely on this path, but is, um, you know, waiting. sort of yeah. waiting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's interesting, like you said, like the past lives, like it, it's all there, and not just, not just for these, this family, my family, but past lives coming through. You just know everything you know and it arrives to you and 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 i am just wonder if this idea that you know we forget when we come in and it feels like with these younger generations they have not forgotten as much it's they're remembering and retaining more um as they because i didn't yeah yeah um I just want to get back to the channeling very quickly. So, just for so, so we just sum that up. So, basically, yeah, when you channel, it's it's uh, automatic writing in a sense. Tell me if I'm saying it wrong. Um, is that yeah? It's, it's, okay. And um, if someone's watching this and they're interested in in channeling, would you also say? Um, we, well, you'd also you would say we can all do this because you teach it, obviously, right? And I'm I'm guessing that there there are those that are more open to it. And there are those that are, um, it comes easier for some than others. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I would, yeah, I would say that um, channeling in speaking comes easiest to those who speak a lot. Channeling in writing comes easiest to those who are good language skills. I'm sure somebody could channel in science. I don't know how to do that, but somebody could. Einstein probably is where it came from. And then people who have hands healing, it comes through. It's like whatever you're best at, your gift's going to come through. So if you're not great at language, maybe you don't work on channeling. Maybe you work on hands healing or mind's eye viewing. Work with, your, work with what's easiest for you, and that's where it'll open the fastest. 
Yeah, uh, because I think what's what's cool about the way that you do the channeling is it, it just goes to show that it doesn't need to be. Um, I mean, yes, yeah, you feel that that there's an energy that's sort of synchronized with you, and it just it just flows out. But you know, w what about even just tapping in? And I say this on so many interviews, maybe all of them, right? What about just tapping into the higher self, what a, a person's you know soul in a sense, and just how. Mm -hmm. How much you know, love, and um, how much uh, uh, wealth of, of 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 care and knowledge there is there, and help that you can give yourself. If yes, so that is such a fascinating idea. So my my way of looking at the soul is that we're collective soul. So like your soul, my soul, we have a little soul collective, and then everybody else is joins in. So. Um, like I don't use that term higher self for me because it implies like one, um, but this idea of tapping into collective soul and for me, the guides of that channel, they're just a piece of collective soul that I'm picking up on. Um, um, but really it's just gaining access to a part of source, which is what everything is. It's that when we do third eye viewing, we're gaining access to a part of all dimensions. That is collective soul. It's that's what the universe is collective consciousness. So um, it can be very useful to work with these higher level beings because they're like translators for collective soul or translators for the universe, like bringing it down, <laughs> bringing it down to the human level so we can actually use the information because we're pretty low on the evolutionary scale <laughs> well, yeah. well like, yeah, i i know right I, I if only we could uh, all come from from peace it would you know peace within ourselves yeah. as well i think it starts there don't it do you know what i mean yeah you know being kind to ourselves yeah yeah and and there's so many challenges now um especially in all these addiction or distraction like drugs and alcohol of course porn um shopping consumerism yeah and so like those are like these dimensional places we get stuck in and we think that that all that suffering is where we have to stay but we don't have to we can just walk out into a different room um, but that is part of the struggle. It sounds so easy what you're saying, but it, re it really, once you've done it, it does feel that easy, even though getting out was a bloody monumental, yeah. you know, yeah. uphill struggle. But you, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How do, how, how would someone know they're doing it right in a sense that, you know, uh, even if they're bringing through what they think is a higher self or, or i mean i'm using that word again yeah I'm, mm -hmm, what, that's what, fine but, yeah but but even even the creative writing how how do you know you're doing it you're doing it correctly would you say well you start to get all these uh s signs and s signals from the universe um like we're always being guided right and it's not just like I call it entering in when we go into this space and gather the information but also expanding out and letting the universe just inform uh, inform you. So one really interesting thing, um, I, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. So um, so I was looking at some of your things, like I, I had never really read Dolores Cannon, right? I know you've interviewed her and her daughter and she's amazing. So I'm oblivious, I'm oblivious. I don't know who this master is and so in the time before you emailed me, I kept getting this word Ozark, right? I got Ozark, Ozark, Ozark. I'm like, what? What's Ozark? Am I supposed to go there? And then you and I are in contact and that's that and I, Ozark, Ozark. And then it comes to be that that's Dolores Cannon's publishing company. So these ways that these convoluted, uh, there's her word, this convoluted ways that the universe is like, hey, come on, pay attention. This is where, yeah, this is the next piece for you to know. And um, it's that's, just always like that. That's kind it's of, it's always like that. That's so, that's, I was going to say, use the word that's so weird, but it's not that's so cool. 
uh, that, yeah. that that you got that through and, and that's confirmation and here I am and I'm and I'm so glad to, you know to, to connect with you uh, and, the, and like I say there's so much to Sarah's work I'm barely touching the surface here we there's so many but we, we can make a book just on <laughs> uh, one book on, on on a show do you know what I mean without how many you've got um it's it's I, I just it's incredible when I got to Amazon Amazon I was like wow <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's just concentrate on the most recent one then, almost right. Um, which is which is fantastic. I mean, hats off to you for building your platform like you have. I mean, really, honestly, you know, ugh, there's just so many underground, and I know you're not underground, but I, I see meet so many underground mm-hmm. people nowadays, and they've got uh, they're just packed out. And, and I'm like, yeah, how did you yeah. get to this point? This is incredible, you know? And then I'm joining them, you know, and then we're bringing new people to each other, and it's it, it, it is kind of like uh. In- incredible it is when you see it it's kind of like um when the music industry opened up to like say itunes which i think was like the first one and suddenly there were all these artists that were magnificent right but before we'd only known what the record label was providing you and so now all these people that have been doing all this work for their lifetimes and there it is and yeah yeah, it's, it's interesting. It, it, no, it's it's so beautiful. So um, now you don't tell. Well, tell me if you don't. Maybe I don't know. Should ask you really. But do you give readings anymore? I don't know if you do. I do. I do. Oh, you but do. Right. Not too many. Um, I just yeah, less and less and less. <laughs> I mean, I like them. They're fun, but uh, it feels like the other things kind of need to be more the priority right now. Well, or they so, will be soon. No, I get that. I get that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if someone's watching this and they're like, yeah, I've got such a pull to want to get a reading with, with Sarah, what would they do if they feel that way? They would just go to the website and make an appointment. It's pretty easy. Like, I'm like, like I'm pretty open. And, and as I, like, I used to do lots of readings and now I just have a few and it'll be less, but, um, right now. Yeah. And I think, I think you teach as well. Or you, you've done a book on how to connect to your loved ones because that's an important subject mm-hmm, for people. Mm-hmm. Um, d- does that include pets as well, or is that just could that be pets or? Oh, it could certainly be pets. Um, I have d- I have not done a lot of focus around say past lives, mediumship, animal communication. Um, it's interesting. It's like it's interesting. Like like some like I'm really sort of like clairvoyance, the guides, channeling, um, and dealing with, to some degree, future visioning, but like dealing with how do you, how do you, you're a regular person, you have all these issues in your mind anyway, or, or you have real issues, you have, you can't get your job, your rents due, the, the, the stuff that people go through and, or someone passes and, you know, just the pain and so how do you get yourself out of those that suffering place that's kind of what i'm interested in teaching well let's just go there then how do you get yourself for anyone that's going through that suffering right now whether they're you know suffering from just you know the craziness of the world they feel the, the weight of it how, how do you get yourself out of that place yeah so i feel like it's like um so some things are practical you have to um it's, it would be very easy for the world to change hunger and violence and inequality instantly if the consciousness was high enough, right? If we just all decided, sort of like with the UK, Ukraine, no, this is not right. We can't do this anymore. So the idea is to let go of all of those pieces of old culture, dominant culture, societal view, like misbelief is what they call it, and get yourself to a place where you can at least have a higher, like a higher vista view. And from then you have some more choices. And sometimes people are in such a low spot. All they can do is listen to some music or take a shower or do these very simple things that just help relax. If you can get off drugs and alcohol and porn, wow, that really frees up a lot of space to feel healed, relax. Um, So sometimes it's just these tiny little changes and steps that add up to, and 
I also think like souls help each other, right? So like the support group is, if you go to like AA is a really good model of simple, non-dogmatic, well, maybe a little, but non-religious, uh, like go to support groups for whatever you're dealing with and let other souls help you. And this, the worst thing to do is to just stay in your room, this, you know, suffering, How, let others help you ask for help. Yeah. That's so important right now. And even coming to the groups that you put together as well. I mean, that's, you know, that's what it's there for as well. Partly. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's to give absolutely. you to support in that sense. And, and to meet like-minded people as well um that you don't you know that you can share these these experiences with and, and not be judged and uh you know grow something from it it's so important yeah now that that's really good advice actually um i need to listen to that as well um <laughs> i'll just say that yeah um well uh <laughs> i also kind of want to ask you as well when 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 you um Obviously, you, you've got a book here as well about connecting with loved ones. Is oh, yeah. that is that something that you teach as well, or is that something that, that naturally comes in, in, as part of the one of the courses, or is that just something that you felt yeah, a call so, to write about? Yeah, mediumship. Um, I would say that there's better mediums than me, and people. Some people really gravitate to that. I do teach it, and it's not a place. I guess, I guess kind of like I don't put my focus a whole lot on like past lives or the past. It's like, what is the now? So yes, there's a course and there's a book and I teach it and I'm really focused on, okay, here we are. What are we supposed to be doing? How do we figure that out? Um, obviously, if someone has passed that you love, you can of course reach them all the time as much as you want. You can reach your ancestors. You can go back and heal karma, all of that. But um, there's also like the life in front of us. It's so like, important, what's that isn't about? it? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I that is key. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. the now, I, and I can see why you concentrate on that because that's what the power is. You know, to yeah, to heal as well. Um, are you using then? Obviously, when you connect psychically, do you, you're using you're connecting with your guides? Are you? Is that what you would say? Or yeah, um, I connect with the guides, and then I have a like in clairvoyance, I um, have a I'll just go and you know view the situation, or I just see it like a movie in my head, or I'll get like a lot of times this language, you know, it's metaphoric or symbolic or. So you get a visual, like a guiding vision, like this metaphorical vision. Um, some people get like tarot cards. It's like the symbolic way that we are given the information, these kind of symbolic shortcuts. So I have a lot of that. Like I just see it unfolding, um, not forever, but into several years usually. Yeah. Now, are those guides, are they different or guide? Uh, is that different to mm -hmm. the sort of connection that you've got when you channel with, with that energy yes yeah there's kind of the channeling guides are very currently they're very tall like very long tall pieces of light or something like that the regular guides are much more humanized like there's this one very funny sort of ancient asian indian guide that's, you know, so like they're, they're very, I've had for a while when I was creating all the coursework and so forth, I had Merlin, like, here's, here's how you do it, you know, like, 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 <laughs> just, um, and then I had these two Quaker or Mennonite ladies at the beginning. And then I had, um, I have a, a, a woman that goes into like, all of the departed lands um so it's a variety um and and but the channeling ones are these tall light beings some people probably i think i mean most people would say they might be pleiadians but i have no that i don't know anything about it that, doesn't really. matter does it yeah but that's yeah they are there is a difference and you can you you, you can recognize the energy as well yeah and um I think what I like about your work as well is that you sort of, well, everyone can use whatever word they 
but you use the word intuition quite a bit the the intuitive path and that's the you've sort of stuck with that direction haven't you for quite a lot, a lot of your work actually yeah i think that um there has to be a different way of connecting to the universe outside of religion outside of these old thought systems and and outside of the control of anyone else telling you how it is like there has to be a way or there is a way to each person can do it themselves so that's what i'm interested in well yeah i should just say and i'll put this up on the screen as we speak right now you know you have done a book on on intuition i mean uh, and there is just you know yes there's a, there's a lot in there um you you know even in that book uh, you talk about connecting obviously the, the between guides and angels do you do you see a difference between them or do you think they're one of the same because that word gets branded around quite a bit mm -hmm. doesn't it yeah a lot of people have angelic um a lot and again i don't know i'm very uh i get the guides i don't really <laughs> i don't i i have I, all the other things happen but my focus continually is like this is where you're supposed to be this is your like little home area to teach from and somebody else can teach you know from the angels or somebody else can teach from past lives but right now at least that's that's where i'm supposed to be absolutely it is and a lot of the students do you think a lot of them well do you know i want i actually wanted to say something else i actually wanted to talk about you know a lot of people when they get readings you know it's always about relationship isn't it that's the sort of main sort of angle isn't it you know that's the that's the driving force isn't it for a lot of people like yeah yeah it's so important isn't it i guess you know it's it's what pushes us forward doesn't it to learn the, the, some of the loveliest lessons and the hardest lessons from i guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah well i don't believe in soulmates or i don't believe in one soulmate i believe in multiple soulmates and it's really about finding the person that first will help you learn the hard soul lessons <laughs> and then maybe you find a different person and you learn the nicer soul lessons with them um but but it's all around you know you're just helping each other um and if there's any any drama like just let it go like why do we have to suffer in romance <laughs> we don't just let it like let it go early and so um, I don't hold to like the traditional, like you should stay married or you should never get divorced or uh, it, it has to be a certain way. None of that. It's just like find the people or person that you're supposed to be working with as a soul and then go forward the, the, with that person. And how do you find that? Is that when there's no arguments or is that uh, second, no. se se second, second marriage is the best? <laughs> what do you recommend? Second, third, fourth. No, uh, no, I just kidding. Um, or maybe no marriage, right? Like, why do we have to get married? Um, um, yeah, arguments are fine if they're making progress. But if they're just if it's just that circle of. Uh, oh, um, you know, it can be, it can turn so nasty, <laughs> can't it? You know, it, it, and then it gets into yeah. the realms of bloody domestic violence, then don't it? Sometimes for yeah. people, it can be, it can be cruel. Um, yes, we have to learn to walk away, don't we? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, um, well, we have to. Well, I think I. Well, what do I think? I think we attract someone that we're, we're going to. We obviously need to get some lessons from for each of us in our well, own different ways. Yeah, well, we attract the people that we have this heavy, this karma with. We got to work on that karma. This is why sometimes in a relationship, um, either you solve that karma really quickly, then you don't need the relationship, or you come to this place, like in a lot of relationships, you realize the karma will not be solved in this lifetime. And so it's time to say goodbye and work, find somebody you can work with rather than a life of suffering, working on the same piece of the puzzle over and over. It's like, just sort of like in, in my first marriage, that was it. It's like, this will never be solved. What is the point of, uh, find somebody that each person can work with? Because think how many souls there are, human souls that the options is just not. It's just I know, not hard. Right. I know. I know. I know. Um, 
Yeah, and and there's many things that are pulling us into certain you know relationships and uh, um, connections that we you know don't always understand and um, are not always obvious. Uh, yes, okay. but but that's why it's nice to be able to you know sometimes um, get a reading with someone and just uh, you mm-hmm. know um, see it from a different perspective. Sometimes yeah. so it's always helpful, yeah. I, I think. Um, yeah, what um, what are some of the main lessons? Do you think, or some of the main teachings that are coming through for you right now, which are, are sort of uh, have all? Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. So what I think is coming through is. I did the channeling for the yearly forecast for 2022 and so much was about um, like the consciousness is lifting rapidly, which I'm sure you've heard many people say, but um, some of the specifics like this idea of um, things like gender roles, they're not going to be around the same in a couple generations or uh, uh, sort of like racial inequality, it's not going to be accepted. The ecological damage, it's not going to be allowed. Um, there's some really interesting, just as when smartphone came in and suddenly the world was different, there's a new technology coming in, um, kind of like, I guess it's kind of like hologram, but in the room, it's not, um, what is that? Not AI. Um, virtual. Re- it's not virtual reality. Yeah, it's not that. It's like you don't have to wear glasses. Nothing's embedded. It's just in the room. So you and I would be like in the room <laughs> together. But yeah, yeah. So that's that. And then when that comes, like it's not. Um, I was looking at it. It's not dematerializing and rematerializing like on Star Trek. It's not beaming. It's it's the the hologram in the room so when these things come and there's all this stuff about food plant-based foods and and um everything comes very quickly so uh it's kind of remarkable how we turn from this sort of stodgy meat and potatoes patriarch traditional and then suddenly it's not that way anymore so that's I'm very excited about all of those practical changes, I guess, that shift us. Do you see those changes? What are, are we talking about a decade? Are we talking a couple of decades? It's a, it's a couple. It's a. I think some of them are a decade. Like I think this hologramic, um, and I think a couple are a couple decades or generations. It's like Gen Z. The next one, the next one, the next one. At, at, that's that the makes point sense. where that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And also, um, continue. So a lot of times in my groups, my we'll do future visioning, and everyone sees these little pod, like they're like mini cars, but they're airplanes, but they're pods, and we just fly around in them. And I'm like, where can I get mine? But um, and I don't think it's so far, like. It's not that far. They're working on stuff like that, aren't they? They're, they're pro- yeah. prototypes of very early development, you know, y- using sort of, you know, what we have right now. Um, no, probably not. No, I could see yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, that, but but we made it. As I think that's one of the big things is that, you know, we're still here. This is not yes. the, the end. I mean, yeah. yeah. No, no. Because there's, a, there's, a, there's things... a lot of heavy energies right now. I'm just, that's why I mentioned that. It's, you know. Yes, of course. It's been incredibly difficult the climate stuff the political stuff the immigration stuff like covid on on and on but all of this has almost like made us decide like no i don't accept that and this collective awakening to the idea that that's not where we're going to go like well that's not where we want to go and I just want to touch on as well, because I know we're getting close to the end. Thank you for that as well. Um, you know, we obviously, you know, you've got books. Um, well, you've you've at least done one book or maybe you've done more based on manifestation, because that's something that you you sort of mm-hmm. have uh, dealt with. You know, you've, you've, you've covered it quite extensively. And um, um, I haven't got the book name in front of me, but I know that you have done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, that's funny. I was talking to someone today and they're like, you're me like i'm the i believe in anti-manifesting right 
so so i reject oh i'm gonna get so much bad mail but i reject law of attraction <laughs> um in the purest in, in the purest form i accept it as it's widely used i don't my approach is that i've received you generally ask for what you want and then you let the universe you follow the guidance you follow you you are you do not create you are led to and that is the, the different piece of you do not push the river you do not create you are led to and that tends to raise some ruffles but that's what i find has been how it really works that's so interesting because i think also what you're saying is you know and whatever is the result of that will be for the best for you you know whatever comes is the best for you and it may come in a different way to what you expected which is part of the teaching but also i think that's what you're saying as well yeah and not just best the best for me or for you but like the best for the collective like the whole consciousness it's the best for the whole because we're part of you know, that idea uh what affects one lowercase affects one big o the big uppercase yeah that is so true that is so true yeah I, and, and i and i do i do like what you're saying what you're saying there i think um because we could become so stressed about it, don't we? We'd be, oh my God, the amount of pressure we put on ourselves to manifest some of some of us, you know, that thing that we want. And we, we're, we're so rigid in, in it, do you know what I mean? And we won't change our mind and we must have it. Do, yeah. You know. Um, well, especially yeah. since like we're so often misled by like society says maybe like, oh, you have to have money, right? But maybe like what if what if money was completely the wrong thing to focus on? What if the thing to focus on was meaning or enjoyment or whatever and then that opened up every other door that oh yeah and money came because of that but it like the stingy way like what is that um the christmas carol you know he's like <laughs> scrooge yeah just like who was the more more rewarded in that story the when yeah. you're and you're you hit the nail on the head there you know and and that could even be living your purpose no matter what that is if if <laughs> it always provides for you let's just say that let's just go that yeah. far and if you're meant to have on if you want untold wealth and everything else well okay um if that's on, on the cards yes but and if it's not and you you want to manifest i'm sure there will be a price to pay for that you may have to yeah. give up a lot to get to that point you know and yeah. i are you prepared for that right or um the inequalities in the world of people having so little and people having so much like how could that be correct to want it all for yourself you know like let's just each have what we need that's plenty like yeah it just the whole thing is misguided completely because it's based on the idea that one person's better than the other and there's in souls are all equal so there's no there's no uh i i always say when we transition over none of us are taking our underwear do you know what i mean <laughs> so you know we're not taking anything so yeah uh, yeah, yeah you know uh, so uh it's all fair in the end uh yes and i think more and more thinking will come down to to, to this uh, understanding and uh, many people do feel the same way as you i mean you, you know that and um but uh, and we're not we're not saying neither of us that wealth is bad i'm not saying that at all i'm just saying i agree i'm agreeing with you in the way that you know that that, that some of us own you know have only or only think we want that and you know that's yeah. not your purpose <laughs> that's yeah. you know yeah yeah so funny that you said about the underwear because the guides often show up not just for me but for lots of people like in these like robes and i'm like i can't you know obviously guides don't need robes right they don't they're just spirit and and i said i asked like why do you come in robes and they're like it's because this is what you expect like we you expect to see us in robes we wear robes you want us in hawaii shirts we'll wear hawaii shirts whatever the fastest way we can get through the mind block uh, 
will show up that way to help you. Yeah. And do you think more and more people right now are um, wanting to wake up to, to a greater version of themselves, like to a greater reality, which only, which doesn't like take them away from, you know, they, they want to be here. People want to be here and live this experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you think, um, I, I, I guess the whole, the whole, you know, people, people are waking up more because, um, the, well, there's people, I guess, you know, the people need help, don't they? The, I mean, this oh, is the yeah. thing. There's so, yeah, so many people suffering. Well, it's, yeah. it's, um, we're evolving. Finally, we're finally evolving. Well, no, I guess we have been evolving all through all the past lives, all the things we did before. Um, but there's been this, like, I don't like harmonic conversions, the shift, the agent of Aquarius, which we're in now, like we're just getting more and more aware. And then in our awareness, um, we have to help each other. That's the whole thing of it. We cannot, we, nobody can do it by themselves at all. Yeah. No, God. God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, but you know, I'm sure that, you know, you've had to get help with with just running your organization you know your 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 company and everything else. It, it, it's it's there's a i'm sure you get a lot of emails i'm sure there's a lot of things to do and you can't you know you, you yeah just like that you know you can't do anything by yourself and um well you know. actually i do <laughs> i'm very hermit like i do it all by myself but what has been the help for me is um opening everything up to like these other people the, the people that i'm teaching and the people that my students that teach me that's where like this feeling not being alone like having these gifts or um holding up holding the pain of others often and then um have knowing that there are others kind of sharing not just in my little group but in the world there's lots and lots of people kind of stepping forward to contribute this way Uh, if there's any final message you want to give please do if there's anything you might want to say i think um things are actually getting better even though it might not appear like it today and you know um anybody that's suffering um just take that one small step and that will lead you to the next one like don't give up just keep going and the teeny place the teeny the tiniest step takes you into the next step and you will get out of this despair that's just how it works thank you for sharing that that's so important for anyone that's suffering right now you are not on your own you are worthy you you are loved by more people than you can imagine and um you're needed here regardless of that mind noise you're needed here so just go get help whichever way you can for who from whoever you can right now and um yeah and your your guides are always there when you think you're so alone as well so yes you know and they will speak to you so uh sarah your website one last time is uh sarahweisman.com okay well that's been coming up on the screen throughout this as well and um I, I'm so glad that you came on to show it just another way of of, of channeling and you know that with the, the with the psychic work you do as well because it's not always about you know let's sit there you know ask you questions and, and connect with this you know um uh you do it through a different way and, and that's really important to demonstrate that and uh yeah, I would recommend anyone check out your books. Again, all the links for Sarah are in the description below to this video. And um, uh, you'll be able to get Sarah on her website as well. She's contactable there. So I just want to say, uh, well, no, until next time, <laughs> I will say that. Until next time, um, just thank you so, so much. And it'd be great to get you back on in the future. I'd love to do that. I had a wonderful time speaking with you. And I'm, I'm very honored because you were doing wonderful work yourself so thank you for that thank you